He's the Michelin three star chef who took half a chicken and half a duck and stitched them together like Frankenstein. Then he shocked everyone when he suddenly took meat off the menu. After that, he got rid of the menu concept altogether. The question is, is Alain Passard losing his touch or is he an absolute genius? Today, we are back in the city of love to find out. We are here in the 7th district of Paris. Steps away from Rodin's sculpture of the Tinker. And it got me wondering if this was a good idea. Today, we are going to Arpège the three Michelin star restaurant that went vegetarian about 20 years ago. I know this place is famous, but are they going to make veggies try and mimic meat? Inside, the writing is on the wall and everything else. Plants everywhere. It's clearly inspired. I like it. I love large dining rooms with lots of space, but here they don't have that much room. The tables are really close together and that makes it a bit noisy. We kick things off with a bearish and sans brutus of champagne and dive right into some tarlets. Carrots and zucchini, beetroot and basil. Everything edible and delicious. How this restaurant went from meat focused to vegetarian sounds more like fiction than real life. Chef Alan Passard grew up in Brittany, the son of a seamstress and a musician. His grandfather was a sculptor and his grandmother a cook. They taught him the artistic skills that would later help him to excel in the kitchen. He learned fast. At the age of 26, he became the youngest chef to earn two Michelin stars. A few years later, he returned to one of the restaurants where he started his career and bought it. He renamed it L'Arpège, a musical reference to honor his father. By 1996, he already achieved three Michelin stars, and Arpège was one of the most famous rotisserie restaurants in Europe. By all accounts, Chef Passard was on top of the world. But inside, things weren't sitting well. He felt he had reached his limits with protein and needed a new challenge. In 2001, he announced the focus would no longer be on meat. He said he wanted to elevate the humble vegetable to a grand cru. Not everyone was thrilled at the idea. Some critics thought he had gone crazy and would lose his Michelin stars. The joke was on them. Chef Passard took a lot of heat, but eventually people saw the light. He never lost a star and Passard even took home the Chef's Choice Award in 2019. And Arpège has been all over the world's best restaurants list for years. My next champagne is suggested by the sommelier. This is by Tarlan. It was so good that since then I already have some bottles in my private cellar. The Tarlan family has been making wines in the Manuelli since 1687. There hasn't been one generation skipped in over 300 years. Imagine, this one is a 2004 barrel fermented Chardonnay. I really enjoy the beautiful structure of it. Looking at the bright and colorful cover of the menu, I notice it matches the plates. All of it done by the chef. He is also an artist. Speaking of the menu, it's not a traditional menu. It's more like what's available today. You can choose the 11 course tasting menu or order a la carte. Normally, I would jump on the tasting menu, but today it's gonna be different. Our server suggests that we split dishes so we can try more of them. So for the first time on this channel, I decide to go a la carte. We go with two appetizers and two mains. How does Chef Fassard decide what to cook? Basically, he lets nature decide, selecting only what is ready from the gardens. Arpège operates three gardens in the area and they grow almost everything we are going to eat today. It can be hard to predict peak freshness, so it's not uncommon for the menu here to change four or five times in a single week. That means your experience will be different from mine, unless we both come on the same day. This sets the bar extremely high. Constantly changing the menu can be a nightmare, both for the kitchen and the service team. I am super curious to see how they manage to pull it off. Coming up, we have homemade baguettes with organic flour and sea salt butter from Normandy. The bread is gorgeous, and nobody makes a better butter than Normandy. And they have the medals to prove it. Every year, Normandy butter makes the podium at the World Championships. Next is the famous Arpege Ames Bush. It looks like a simple egg, but it's actually so much more. 
is the warm and cold soft boiled egg. The yellow part is a real egg yolk that is carefully poached. The white is creme fraiche whipped with aged sherry vinegar. It's topped with chives, a touch of maple syrup and a pinch of sea salt. It's warm, cold, savory, sweet and salty. It's unbelievably good. Although things have changed a lot here at Arpege, the warm and cold egg is a classic. It's been served here for 36 years. Our first appetizer is the trilogy of dumpling in a tomato and basil consomme. Our server tells us our quest for the night is to find out the flavors of the dumplings. It's a fun game I get to play with my daughter. Although we couldn't agree on what the flavors were, we both thought that the tomato consomme was delicate and elegant. Although it's a little cramped in here, they make up for it with attentive service and attention to detail. The tableware is exquisite and everything in here is luxury great. Next we have another interesting dish. A gazpacho with zucchini, white celery and mustard ice cream. I know, sounds unusual, right? On paper, yes. On the tongue, it's incredible. I've actually tried my hand at making gazpacho. Although I am no Alan Passard, I know firsthand how the simple stuff can be incredibly hard. This is beautifully balanced with a perfectly smooth texture. It's perfect. Coming up, we have two preparations of lobster. The first is playful. It's prepared with honey. On the top is sliced zucchini, edible flowers and black pepper. It is sweet and acidic, which didn't impress my daughter much, but I thought it worked really well. The second lobster comes out to say hi. He looks a little angry at me. Maybe because our next course is him. While the kitchen prepares it, I get a new recommendation from the sommelier. A 2014 Pinot Noir from Pierre Moret from Merceau. A great wine. I really like this sommelier. A true professional who knows her stuff. The lobster is back in a yellow wine sauce from Jura. On the side we have cabbage, clams, potato and green beans. This is a great example of traditional French cuisine. The lobster is perfect, the sauce is wonderful and the portion is huge. And this is only a half portion. Our next dish looks like a beef tatar, but it's actually not. Usually I don't like this imitation imposter food where they try to mimic something made with meat. I was judging this one the moment they put it in front of me. Then I tasted it. And I take it back. This was such a good dish. Amazing execution. Instead of beef, we have beet. For the fake egg, they use cream of lentil and garlic. And the yolk is just a thin slice of carrot. There is also eggless mayo made with carrot and mustard. And the beetroot caramel. Brilliant. Our final main is wheel sweet bread with caviar in a masa sauce. On the side is artichoke, carrot and zucchini stuffed with garlic and shallots. And here on the side they add a spoonful of smoked eggplant caviar. Usually in fine dining you will see the spoon of caviar as the finishing touch. Doing it this way really puts your focus on the eggplant. Taste-wise this dish was excellent. The stuffed zucchini is easily one of my favorites. Another fantastic dish they have here. Now it's on to desserts, prepared tableside. I always enjoy this type of show. It's entertaining and educational, although I will probably never try to make this. Here they are making a candied tomato. In the pan is a stuffed tomato with 16 secret flavors. The liquid is an orange, lemon and vanilla syrup. Served next to it is verbena ice cream with edible flowers. Watching them plate is like watching a live painting. They make it look so easy. This dessert had a huge build up and it did not disappoint. It was exciting to the last bite. My daughter has a celery and mint souffle with Peyro's ice cream on the side. Sounds like a weird combination, but she really liked it. If you like this type of video, why not hit subscribe? It will help us make more videos just like this. In the center are cream puffs with fig leaf ice cream topped with blackcurrant sauce. This one had a quite a vegetable taste, which was not my favorite. All in all, a unique dessert lineup. I like how they stick to their guns and use veggies even in the sweets. 
After dessert, the service starts to get a bit thin. While empty dessert plates stay on the table, we see our first gap in the service so far today. Finally, we have the petit fours. We have carrot, lavender cream, and a biscuit with rosemary and buckwheat seed. We are amazed by how creative they are to the very end. Our total comes just over 1500 euro for two. In dish after dish, chef Alan Passard and his team have shown pure genius in making vegetables the stars of the show, proving that by taking a more difficult path, it is possible to come up with some really exciting things. At Arpej, not only are they dedicated to this, they have honed it to perfection. I left Arpej pleasantly surprised. Here, I prefer the dishes with just vegetables over those that included protein. So often, we see vegetables used to complement a protein. I like it when a chef rises to challenge and uses them in a new, exciting way. This chef has not gone completely mad. He just occasionally travels into the vegetable patch with bravery, curiosity and humility. And that does it for this episode. Thank you for joining me. If you like this video, hit subscribe. See you next time.